Let's bring in former Chrysler and Home Depot CEO, also former top GE executive Bob Nardelli, and former Treasury official Michael Faulkner. First to you, Bob, what do you make of what's going on with the White House treating Israel this way? Israel's put all of its embassies worldwide on high alert. Iran reportedly may attack Israel within 48 hours. What do you think, Bob? Well, I, I think, you know, you've covered it quite well. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. They have been such strong partners for us over the years. Liz, it's just very, very disappointing. And you have the oil prices up there. <clears throat> this is no surprise. On the first day of this administration, they surrendered our energy independence. Then they drew, drew oil out of the emergency reserve. They shut drilling down. Most recently, the, the new mandate about not being able to export LNG as one of the biggest geopolitical things we could have done. So it's just one continuous debacle after another. You know, we talked about this before about EVs. We talk about reckless spending. We talk about immigration, all adding to inflation, lawless societies. It's uh, there isn't a household in the country today that could have the reckless right. spending that this administration is doing versus their internal budget yeah. for survival. You, you, you know, what Bob just said, Michael, let's get your take. Uh, Biden's former White House chief of staff, Ron Klain, he's now joining David Axelrod and James Carville, telling voters Biden is losing with voters with Bidenomics. Ron Klain admitting inflation is too high. American families are getting hit. Listen to Ron Klain here. Well, I think the disconnect, Chris, is people live their lives and they want to know how it affects them and their kitchen table and their and their family budget. And prices, although inflation is moderated, prices are still high. Price of gasoline is still high. Um, you know, other prices are still high, and people feel that pinch. What do you think, Michael? By the way, former President Trump edged out President Biden in another new poll, this one from Emerson College. He's leading Biden 46 to 45 percent. Two-thirds of swing state voters, that new Wall Street Journal poll, say the Biden economy is not working for them. Trump is leading by anywhere from two to eight points in these six battleground states. They are suffering. Those states have more economic pain than the rest of the U.S. What do you think of all this, Michael? Absolutely, Liz. And, you know, another group that's really been hurting under this administration is what has typically been a core Democrat constituency, which is young people. But they, of course, are the ones that have a disproportionate portion of their income go to th things like food and energy. They're the ones that are really struggling to buy houses and buy cars due to the high interest rate environment that we're seeing under this administration. And so you see that for young people, those under 30, they're now pointing to the economy as one of the biggest issues. And they're the ones that are, that are really suffering under Bidenomics. And as Bob just said, at the core of it is an energy strategy. I know that we often talk about energy primarily as an economic issue, but it is such an important national security issue. Imagine what this world would look like at $40 oil instead of at the $86 that it's at today if we had pursued an aggressive yep energy dominant strategy like we had under President Trump. This is why Gallup, Quinnipiac, Real Clear polling averages 538 have the Biden White House polling the worst in the modern era of the, of the United States of America. You know, under the Trump White House, Bob, typical families increase their income by about $6,000. So far under yes. Biden, typical families have lost over 2000 that's a big swing of $8,000. Watch President Trump here and listen to parents and grandparents worry about their kids not getting the American dream. Watch this. When I win, you are all getting tax cuts and you're getting a brand new Trump economic boom. And that's where we were headed. You can't afford the American dream. With what, we, what we wanted when we were young, it's not something really our kids can afford because it's too expensive. We've got ours, but our, our kids and our grandkids can't afford homes and they can't afford to do the things they'd like to do. Kind of lost our way. I mean, it's impossible for the younger generation to afford housing. I mean, a car costs what my parents bought a house for, like stuff like that. And I mean, wages have remained stagnant. Bob, your reaction? Uh, you know, Liz, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, the analysts were showing you the report that 80 percent of those Democrats thought the economy was great. Well, it, it's not the, it's not what I experience every day for sure. You know, you go to a grocery store and you watch people checking out. How often do you see people putting stuff back in the basket because they've already topped out on the limit for, for groceries for their family? You talk about the oil costs going up, Michael, for sure. That's another one. You talk about businesses, because I deal with them every day. And middle to lower middle market businesses today 
are being crushed by the interest rates. Interest rates that they're paying on a flexible uh, debt going from two to twelve billion, uh, twelve million dollars. Right. So we're seeing it in every part of our life. The, the American dream, as the gentleman said, you can't afford a home today. Right. And again, the, the hypocrisy of green and shutting everything down and then pushing electric cars, shutting down energy. It's just crazy what's going on. Yeah, this is, again, they're pulling at the worst in modern U.S. history, Michael. Take it away. Final word, Michael. Yeah, the other thing I would point to is, you know, we get that jobs report tomorrow. Keep looking at how many of those jobs are part-time instead of full-time. So it's not just that wages haven't kept up with inflation, but weekly earnings haven't because the average work week has gone down. We've got to yeah. stop focusing entirely just on number of jobs and look at what kind of jobs they are. Yeah, and watch for government jobs. I think government's adding like 60,000 jobs a month. And uh, you're right, real, I think real Ooh. average work, weekly earnings down more than 4%. Bob Nardelli, Michael Falkader, right. you guys are terrific. We appreciate you so much. We'll have you back on again, we hope, very soon.